Hey guys, this is Video for Charlie back with another Premiere tutorial for you guys. This time we're going to be going over setting up your sequence. So in this lesson we're going to go over how to create sequences and adjust sequence settings. So the easiest way to create a sequence, let's just go ahead and start off by actually closing out the existing sequences we have in our project. The easiest way to go about this is by simply dragging over a clip and dropping it into the timeline panel. Premiere will automatically create a sequence that matches that source material. Now, if you have all matching source material, that's great because you can just go ahead and start from here. Everything should line up. There's not going to be any weird frame sizes or whatever. But in the case that you don't have matching material, you're going to want to be able to go ahead and customize the sequence itself. Now you see that when I drag this clip over and create a new sequence, it actually creates a sequence right here in that same folder. Now for the sake of my own organization, I always like to just drag that up into the sequence bin that I created. And I'll go ahead and just rename that to sample sequence two, since that is our second sequence. Now let's go ahead and just start a new sequence from scratch. We'll use the same method as we did before. This time, I'm just going to go ahead and click on New Item. And you can go up to Sequence. Now, the shortcut for this is just Command-N. It's pretty easy. The, now, the shortcut for this is Command-N. It's pretty easy to remember. But if you forget that, you can always just go down to the menus. Like I said before, Premiere offers a lot of ways for you to access these things. Now, you'll get this Sequence dialog box when you create a new sequence. On the left, there's a ton of presets like we had discussed. And you can go ahead and navigate through these to find what you think is suitable for your project. Now, when working with a lot of HD footage, I generally just use 1920 by 1080 or 1280 by 720. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep this DSLR 1080p 24 preset. You can see here that it has the time base 23976 frames per second. That's frame size 1920 by 1080. Frame rate, pixel aspect ratio, all that information is there for you to know. Now to adjust the sequence settings, you can just go ahead and click on the settings tab. Now we kind of brushed over this before. Let's get into a little more detail with it now. You can change your codec by going up to the editing mode option here. I'm just going to go ahead and keep it on DSLR because that's kind of what we're working with, but you can do red cinema, you got your quick time, got your ABC HD, all different kinds. I'm going to go ahead and just go with the DSLR option for now. Time base is your frame rate. So you can go anywhere from 10 frames to 60 frames per second. Generally, cameras that I'm working with usually will do 23976, 2997, or 5994. For now, I'm just going to keep it at 23976 because I know that one of the clips that we have is actually at 23976. All the clips that we have are at 1920 by 1080, but you can go ahead and change that by simply clicking on it. So if I wanted to do, say, 1280 by 720, I can go ahead and do that. Now you notice that it's showing me the aspect ratio over here on the side, 16.9, just to confirm that I'm actually getting the correct aspect ratio. Now this is of course according to square pixels, you can change this to DVI, DV anamorphic, you can do HD anamorphic, so depending on what you're shooting, you can go ahead and change the settings accordingly. You could also change the audio sample rate anyway from 32 kilohertz to 96 kilohertz. And the video previews area just kind of lets you adjust the render settings according to how you'd like it. So I'm going to go ahead and change this back to 1920 by 1080. So that is what we are working in. Some of these settings actually get automatically adjusted because Premiere knows that that's probably the best setting for you. All this maximum bit depth, maximum render quality as far as the video preview goes doesn't really matter to me, so I'm just going to go ahead and keep it unchecked boxed. And if you'll notice, on the very bottom left, you can actually save this preset. So let's say that I created a custom preset. You know, I knew that I was going to be working with this particular setting a lot. And I had it say, you know, customize, particularly for me. Let's just say that there's some settings in here that I like, and I'm going to go ahead and use that a lot. Well, I can go ahead and just click on Save Preset, and it's going to ask me for a name and description. So I can just say Video Fort Preset, 
And then this is a sample preset. Click OK. Now you notice it's just going to repopulate all the different available presets here. It takes a little while, but once it's loaded, you'll notice that our custom preset will be located in there. There it is, Video Fort preset, with our description and all the different indicators that go along with it. So this could be especially handy if you're dealing with a lot of different sequences. Now Premiere generally lends itself to organizing footage within sequences. Say for example, I'm making a selects reel and I'm gonna have some multi-track audio coming in most of the time and I wanna be able to make selects within that sequence. So I'm gonna be making obviously multiple sequences because say there's gonna be multiple cameras. I can go ahead and just reuse that preset over and over without having to go in, click on settings and redo everything over and over. Now, finally, you can use the Tracks tab up here to set the number of tracks and names of tracks you'd like to use in your sequence. Notice how you can also save the presets down here, just like you could with the other ones. So I can either do 5.1, mono, stereo submix. There's all different kinds of options here that you can do to make sure that your sequence is set exactly how you need it, depending on your project. The master is obviously how it's going to be going out. So you can either have it going stereo, you could have a multi-channel, you could have a mono. Obviously, we're not going to get into that now, but in our more advanced Premiere tutorials, we'll probably be going over how we can use this interface to our advantage for certain projects. So now that everything's set, I'm just going to go ahead and name my new sequence. VF sample sequence 3. And I'm going to go ahead and just drag that into my sequence bin. And there you go. So that about covers creating a new sequence, adjusting any settings, and setting presets for your sequences in Premiere. Next, we're going to be going over some more advanced preferences that are available to you in Adobe Premiere. So that way you'll be able to use these preferences in reference to the previous tutorials, as well as modify Premiere's interface to exactly how you'd like it. For now, this is Video Fort Charlie signing off. You guys have a good one.